Hi, my name is Charlie Keyes, and I'll be your host for this series of presentations dealing with ESIS, a label-free, non-invasive method to monitor cells and tissue culture. The next series of slides will serve as an introduction to all of the other presentations in this series. In this slide, we're going to look at some time-lapse video of epithelial cells as they're growing in tissue culture. Imagine for a moment that instead of having these cells growing upon a glass or plastic substrate, instead they were growing upon a gold electrode. And this electrode is carrying a very weak AC current. As the cells with their oily insulating membranes coat this gold substrate, we should be able to detect a change in the electrical properties or the impedance of the electrode due to the presence of the cells. In this manner, we could electrically monitor the activities of the cells instead of relying in, on optics, as in this fascinating look at cell behavior. This basic idea of monitoring cells electrically came about a number of years ago when Ivor Gaver and I were at the General Electric Research and Development Center. The idea is quite simple. On the bottom of a, a tissue culture dish, we affixed gold film electrodes. We applied a very weak AC signal and inoculated these electrodes with cells. To our surprise, if the electrodes were small, such that we could eliminate solution resistance, we could very easily see the activities of the cells. And this idea was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy back in 1984. And this was the first description of ESIS, electric cell substrate impedance sensing. But we could equally use this acronym to stand for electric cell impedance spectroscopy because as we quickly learned, the AC frequency that is used in making these measurements is very important in terms of what specific activity of the cells can be detected. The ESIS electrodes are shown in this next slide. In the upper left-hand portion, we see eight wells that will be used to culture cells. On the bottom of this, of each well is a large counter electrode labeled CE. But the actual important spot is the working electrode, a small 250 micrometer diameter electrode that you can see in the lower panel with some stained cells upon it. It's the cells that grow upon this electrode that are detected. Although they grow, of course, across the entire bottom of the well, those on the counter electrode are not seen because its impedance is so small compared with that of the small active working electrode. In this case, one would be looking at anywhere from a single cell, which shows up quite readily on the ESIS electrode, to a confluent layer of cells where anywhere from 50 to 100 cells might be crowded onto this small 250 micrometer diameter circle. We're not limited, though, to a single electrode. And if one wishes to study the activities of a larger population of cells, we simply bring in multiple electrodes. Here we're looking at four wells on the bottom of a 96-well plate. And you can quite clearly see the small active ESIS electrodes. Regardless of the electrode configuration, the, electro the electronics are quite similar. Here, again, we're seeing a cartoon version of cells growing in tissue culture medium, which will serve as the electrolyte for this measurement. Again, we've only shown the cells upon the small ESIS working electrode, not upon the large counter electrode, uh, to point out again that it's only the cells on these small electrodes that are detected. We apply a very weak AC signal anywhere uh, from 100 up to 100,000 hertz. And the current density is kept sufficiently low that the measurement is non-invasive. 
The cells are unaware they're being monitored. The voltage drops across their membrane are not sufficiently large, especially in, in, as they're alternating back and forth, to be detected by the cells. The voltage across the electrodes is monitored, handed to a personal computer, and we, we can report the impedance, which is the equivalent of resistance in a DC circuit. But of course, this is an AC circuit. Impedance represented by the letter Z is measured in ohms. Our more sophisticated instruments, in addition to monitoring the voltage across the electrodes, follow the phase difference between the current and the voltage as it oscillates back and forth. And from this information, we can describe the complex impedance, which we represent here as a resistor and capacitor in series. And so the output of the ESIS system will either be the impedance measured in ohms or the resistive portion of the impedance, again measured in ohms, or the capacitance of these gold plates in the solution, these gold electrodes, which will be in the range of nanofarads. These instruments connect to devices in the incubator space. On the left-hand side of in each instrument, is a 16-well holder that accepts two of the eight-well slides. And on the right-hand side of each instrument, a 96-well holder for monitoring more wells to provide higher throughput. Here's typical data that's obtained when we inoculate a single ESIS electrode with a cell suspension that's sufficiently concentrated to drive the electrode to confluence. Here we're looking at two cell types, BSC1, African green monkey kidney cells, and normal rat kidney cells. Notice upon inoculation of the electrodes with the BSC1 cells, we see a rapid climb in the resistive portion of the impedance as these cells attach and spread upon the electrode. By two hours into the run, these cells have reached confluence. The NRK cells are slower in their attachment and spreading, as indicated by the different dynamics of their curve. Notice, though, that without cells, the lowest trace, there is no noise in this signal. It's extremely quiet, because the changes in the resisted portion of the impedance here are extremely large, going up sevenfold from the value found for the open electrode. The fluctuations that we see on top of the wells, the curves from wells with cells, are due to what we term micromotion, due to the motion of the cells upon the electrode, even in the confluent sheet. The ESIS measurement is extremely sensitive to these motions, especially when one is using an, a well that has but a single active ESIS electrode. As we bring in wells with more electrodes, this stochastic nature of the cell behavior, the motion of the cells, tends to be averaged out and the curves become much smoother. The next slide shows the reason we see these changes in impedance. In the upper panel, we see the gold film electrode carrying current. Of course, this is actually carried by ions in solution. The green area is the insulating film that defines the small electrode. The electronics assures that this current is constant at all times. So even when the cell layer grows over the insulating film and the electrode, as shown in the middle panel, the current flows through the cell layer. And if we look more closely at the bottom of this slide, we see that with the cells in place, the current must flow out from beneath the cell around the adhesion plaques and go through this narrow space between the electrode and the basal membrane. Then the current passes through the cell-cell junctions into the bulk to find the counter electrode or another small electrode. The dotted line indicates that some current will capacitively couple through the insulating films, the membranes of the cells, because this is, after all, an AC measurement. The degree to which current couples through the cell membranes is dependent upon the AC frequency. And as we'll see in future presentations, by studying the behavior of cells at different AC frequencies, we can discern different activities of the cells. In conclusion, 
Anything that impinges on the cytoskeleton and changes the morphology of the cell will change these current paths, and this will lead to a measurable impedance change that's detected by ESIS. These changes can come about from a variety of conditions, from signal transduction, viral infection, toxic compounds, different drug exposures of the cell, DNA transfection, changes in the chemical and physical conditions of the cells and culture. This is an extremely versatile measurement, and I hope as you explore the other presentations, you'll see the many areas in which ESIS might impact your research with cells and culture. Thanks for listening.